And making her first national appearance since capturing the Democratic gubernatorial nomination in Ohio, it's former Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley. She's the first woman to be nominated by a major party for governor in the state of Ohio. Uh, uh, Ms. Whaley, welcome to Meet the Press Daily. Thank you, Chuck. Good, good afternoon. Well, let me start with, with uh, there, right there. You, you won your primary rather handily, and you got outspent. That's good news for you, I imagine. But when you see that turnout, how concerned are you? Uh, look, I think we have to always be paying attention to how people are coming out. Certainly, the Republicans in Ohio also decided to have two primaries this this year, another one coming in August because of the rigged maps and the gerrymandering that they won't fix. I know you all have covered that mm -hmm. extensively. And so there was a lot of confusion because we didn't even know if we had a primary until about 30 days before it happened. You add to the fact that the Republican Senate primary spent more money than in the history of American politics in that primary. I think those two, th two factors uh, made a big difference in the primary turnout between the Democrats and Republicans. You know, last night in your victory speech, you, uh, you wanted to make, you seem to want to make potential common cause with those that ran against Mike DeWine and the Republican Party. Um, some of them were rather Trumpy, uh, Ms. Whaley, and that the reason they ran against him perhaps were not the same reasons you're running against him. How common cause do you want to make with these folks? Look, I think sometimes the forest is missed from the trees nationally here. The fact of the matter is, you know, uh, Senator, future Senator Ryan and I have traveled the 88 states, 88 counties, and we've seen over and over again, there's a real frustration about people being forgotten and ignored, and per particularly by the state house. You know, our state house has been called the most corrupt by the FBI in the country. And Chuck, that takes some work. And when you have a governor who's been in office since I was 10 months old, we see real opportunities of really getting uh, to the focus of, of, of really investing in communities and families. And I think that's what this is about. People get to different solutions, but we mm -hmm. all agree that our state house needs changed and we want them to give us a look. How central... Do you believe the, the issue of abortion is going to be in your general election campaign, given what we th think is coming from the Supreme Court, thanks to that leak? Well, I think it's a huge deal. It's something we've been talking uh, really on this race, both in the primary and in, and in the general, because of how extreme Mike DeWine is on the issue of choice. You know, Mike DeWine prides himself in being the most anti-choice governor in the country. He says it himself, that he is the most pro-life governor in the country. He's already directed the attorney general to institute the heartbeat bill, should the Roe piece that we saw come into fruition. And just last week, we had an extreme legislature on the trigger ban that they were moving through say that rape was an opportunity. Now, Mike DeWine has said nothing on this. I'm calling on him to say, what does he think about this? Does he think, you know, people that are human trafficked and rape have an opportunity when they don't get to make a choice between themselves and their families and their doctor? Uh, that's how extreme that's getting in Ohio. Ohio is a pro-choice state. We had a poll about four years ago that showed that 61 percent of Ohioans believe in access for women's choices and access to abortion. And these kind of extreme ideas where Mike DeWine's in the hospital room, I think is a real big problem for Ohio women across the state. Can you sketch out your uh, position on this? Where, where do you draw limits uh, on, on the issue of abortion? Well, look, I think that we need to make sure we have access. I have fought with Pro-Choice Ohio and Planned Parenthood to keep our clinics open. I think this is a very personal, tough decision for women. I don't think government should be involved in it. I think this should be between the doctor and, and the family and the woman that's going through this. And I fought that my entire career. Uh, and we don't see that, right? We see that, you know, with, if Roe uh, likely to fall, that, you know, rich people in Ohio will get to be able to fly to Illinois or New York, and poor, pe poor women won't have that opportunity to make these tough decisions. There's been a lot of coverage lately about what kind of women get an abortion, and it's usually someone that is tough, tough situations between their family uh, and, and what to do. Uh, and I'm proud of the support I've gotten from Planned Parenthood. We need to make sure that, that women have access. We've seen already how devastating this can be in Texas, and it will be worse in Ohio. I, I just to clarify, so you don't believe there should be any government, uh, any any sort of government uh, past limitation on when 
uh, when uh, a woman gets an abortion? I think that this is about a woman and her doctor and her family. And I don't think that Mike DeWine should be in the room when these decisions are being made. These are tough personal decisions. And right now, the discussion in Ohio is whether or not a 13-year-old is raped That's an opportunity for her. We have gone around the bend on this issue in this state. It has mm -hmm. gotten incredibly dangerous. And now we're looking at making decisions that are very, very extreme because we have the most extreme governor in the state, in the country. If you're elected governor, you may have still deal, be dealing with, thanks to gerrymandering, a, a uh, super majority, a Republican majority in the legislature, which could override your veto. You saw that in neighboring Kentucky. A Democratic governor vetoed uh, a, a fairly... A radical bill on abortion, and it got put into law anyway. Are there any powers you would have as governor to prevent a similar situation in, in Ohio? Well, certainly the supermajority of the extreme Republican Party these days is a big deal for us, uh, and we're disappointed that uh, the governor didn't pay attention to 73 percent of the public that voted for fair districts, right? So that's a huge challenge for us. There are other opportunities that the governor in Ohio can protect access by, uh, you know, appointing a pro-choice um, head of public health in the cabinet to really work on access and work on those opportunities. And then, you know, secondly, it should not be lost that the, the districts, the state house districts, will be redrawn in this next governor's round. And so, who sits at the table? For that, mm -hmm. could really, if they do their job, we could actually have fair districts, something that Mike DeWine has not been willing to do. And obviously, that would have a direct correlation with what the abortion law in the exactly. state of Ohio may look like. Nan Whaley, exactly. the Democratic nominee, the new Democratic nominee for Governor of Ohio, thanks for coming on and sharing your views with us. Thank you.